One of the interesting things about this moment is that people are like, we're starting a movement. And I'm like, no, you're joining a movement. <laughs> I believe healing is radical. And Me Too is a movement to, among other things, radicalize the notion of mass healing. As a community, we create a lot of space for fighting and pushing back, but not enough for connecting and healing. I was actually the camp director for a 21st Century Youth Leadership Movement, our summer leadership camps. There was a young girl who had become just my little special. And during Sister to Sister, we would share, young people would share all kind of things, the, the councils would share kind of things. And it was a way for us to bond and connect and just give a free space for the girls to just relax and just be, right? Some of the young people uh, shared their experiences with sexual violence. And she started to share hers, but didn't, didn't share the entire story. And then like the next day following the session, she started following me and just, I need to talk to you, Mr. Ron, I need to talk to you. I knew she wanted to share that part of her story with me. Um, but at the time in my life, I was 22. Um, and I just, I had not really dealt with processing my own pain and my own experience with sexual violence. And I was still just finding language to describe what happened to me, um, and I could not hold space for her. I could not find what I needed, what she needed. Um, in the moment, I just saw the pain in her face. And you know, I was the little tough girl, and I was the one who got in trouble a lot, and I was the one who had a smart mouth and, and those kind of things. And so watching her, knowing that that's the reason where that came from, and watching her close back up, literally before my eyes, like. She had, she had found a, the courage to be vulnerable, and I couldn't find the courage to at least say, me too. Me too is a conversation between survivors, but those are survivors who are ready to say it. Me too, and the, the idea behind me too, and the idea of empowerment through empathy are just entry points into the healing journey. What that journey looks like is completely defined by the individual. If you're ready, there is the onus on survivors to reach back and create space for other survivors to, to come along. Hashtag resistance is interesting, right? It's a new phenomenon. In a lot of ways, it is such a powerful tool. It is a way that we can connect multiple communities across multiple cities and multiple countries in an instant. For hashtag resistance to be effective, it has to have a component of it that comes off of the computer and into the streets. Um, other than that, it's just advocacy. We have, you know, 12 million engagements with this or more than that across social media which means that you have millions and millions of people who have disclosed their experience with sexual violence. Something has to happen. There has to be some container to process that. Um, there has to be some tools that we put out that help people think about what that means, what happens next in their own lives. Um, and the other thing is we need to reshape the conversation in some ways or expand the conversation beyond individuals, right? It's, Harvey Weinstein, it's Bill Cosby, it's Bill O'Reilly, and it's all these like big bad men who did these big bad things, as opposed to the systems that are in place that allow sexual violence to flourish. Like we have to have conversations about what dismantling those systems look like, and beyond conversations, there needs to be community action in place to help start interrupting and dismantling those systems. That's my work. Historically in movements, um, there's been a dichotomy between white women and women of color. I've said many times that sexual violence knows no race or class or gender, um, but the response to sexual violence does. We know that black women are not believed, right? We know that black women have been highly sexualized in both pop culture, politically, uh, from welfare queens to thoughts. Like there's just a, a, a running theme of, of black women being sexual, hypersexual beings. 
Um, and we also know historically that black women haven't been protected in the mainstream when it comes to sexual violence. And I think about Harvey Weinstein singling out Lupita as the only person to push back against their narrative around his sexual harassment. It's in line with what we know about black women's experiences. I think about Leslie Jones, who was attacked on social media and threatened on social media in hor horrific ways and how there was not a groundswell of support for her from across the board, from white women in America. And I think about R. Kelly and how he's still allowed to thrive in the music industry after terrorizing, victimizing, uh, dehumanizing black girls for more than 20 years. Mark Anthony Neal said this in, in an article, if any one of his victims had been a white girl, just one, it would be a whole different conversation. As we continue to do this work, people on both sides will see that every single voice for an issue like this is extremely important.